This is Owen Abbas Hussain from Behind the Gloves. I'm here with trainer Joe Gallagher. We're here at the Scott Quigg press conference before his fight with uh, Stefan Jayome. How's Scott's training coming along? Is that a I wouldn't say there's a, a brilliant training camp because we've had the frustration and disruption of changing opponents time and time again but what Scott Quigg's managed to do is stay focused, stay disciplined and put 100% commitment and focus into each training session and like I say to it now he's, uh, he's ready to rock and roll Saturday night. And how do you as a trainer, how much of a frustration is that for you as a trainer when there's a, there's a change in opponent? Frustrating, really frustrating. I can't tell you how frustrating when you spend so many hours studying an opponent for three days and then he pulls out. Then you go and spend studying another opponent for a few days and he pulls out. You never get them hours back. So, uh, like you say, it's, it's frustrating, but it's part of the sport and uh, just got to deal with what's before us on Saturday night. And Stefan Jerome presents a, a really tough challenge. He's fought Jeremy McDonald, he's fought for the world title, been in Santa Cruz, hits hard with the right hand, comes to fight first and foremost, which will lead to a, uh, a good fight. I asked Scott the same question, but I wanted to ask you, does it put any sort of pressure the way that Carl Phantom won last week for, for Scott to win in a convincing way? No, well? not at all. I think uh, Scott Quigg's going about Scott Quigg's business and he'll win and take care on Saturday night. Carl Frampton fight happens great. Obviously, Leo Santa Cruz is there as well, and he's shown an interest to take the fight before the end of the year. So, possibly Quigg will be fighting Santa Cruz before the end of the year. So, we'll just have to sit and wait and just talk about it Monday morning. Of course, just want to ask you in the, in the press conference itself, uh, were you were you uh, riled up by the fact of certain comments that happened after the Frampton fight by by certain members of the team about the about 900 people that Scott Quick can fill in very Yeah, I thought it was just a, uh, a, a the, the, the well known, the well cable. It was a, a, a cheap shot, but listen, at the end of the day, people got to come and buy tickets to watch them two fight. And listen, everyone has an opinion last weekend and all this week. Everyone's saying Cal Frampton's top dog. I'm sure next week everyone will be saying Scott Quick's top dog. We won't know until they get in the ring, and that's the beauty of it. And I can't wait for that fight to happen. And uh, I'm 100% my man, and uh, I do think Scott Quick's got to pop that bubble. Of course, um, you've got another, you've got a couple of fights on this card, but I want to talk about Anthony Crawler. Yeah. Um, he, after his losses in 2012, he's really shot up. Um, how long do you expect him to be challenging for a world title? It's a shame the fight wasn't this fight for the world title, but I do feel he's had good wins against world-class opposition. Obviously, John Murray fought Brandon Rios, Gavin Reese was a world champion. Foster challenged Alex Arthur for the world title. I think Anthony's matured. He's uh, understanding the sport a bit better and I think the trips out to America over there in the wild card and in January there sparring numerous rounds with Ray Beltran and that have stood him in great stead and given him a self-belief that he's more than capable of handling himself with the elite of the division. Oh, that's fine and you've also got Scotty, Scotty Cardell on this as well. Yeah, Scotty Cardell, real tough fight against the English champion, um, Kurt Goodins and uh, that's got to be a great fight, two young prospects um, ready to put it on the line for the English title and I think it's got to be a real good fight. Um, also two other well, kids on the bill have got Jose Burton in a four rounder and Marcus Morrison who sweet Eminem as we nickname him he's uh, got to make his debut and he's one kid to look out for in the coming years. How proud does it make you that you've got so many fighters on you know on the Sky Sports event we can, you know every sort of Sky Sports event there's normally a Galga fighter on there. How, how proud does that make you? Yeah, it does, but it's, it's not a case I phone up Eddie Hearn and Sky say can you put my fighter on it's a case of the fighters I'll just say Anthony Crawler two years ago was in the wilderness, Paul Smith was, Stephen Smith was, but they've all knuckled down, they've worked hard, won the fights and it's them themselves that have got them into the position to be them fighters fighting for titles and nine of me fighters or ten of me fighters, um, seven of them have got titles and if you haven't got a title these days in boxing you're out of work, quite fortunate my fighters hold titles of some sorts at the moment and you just got to keep winning and uh, everyone has the moment in the sun, you've seen that in the past and uh, at the moment it seems to be shining on us and long may it continue. Of course, just finally, I wanted to talk about uh, Paul Smith. He's got a world title fight coming up against Arthur Abraham. How's he, how's he coming along for that? Brilliant, really looking forward to Paul Smith. His first world title fight, I think it's Arthur Abraham's 18th, 19th. Being him with Andre Ward, Kyle Froch. Listen, you can reel them off. It's a huge gulf in class. People look at it, but Arthur Abraham don't feel the Arthur Abraham that we all know and feared so many years ago. We've still got a huge respect for him. Paul Smith is a hungry challenger. He ain't got to get another shot at a world title. And he's got to make it count. Yeah. The thing with the styles of both fighters, they both like to stand in the middle of the ring and they both like to have it out. And that's 
Joshua gives Paul Smith a chance in this fight, he can hit. And he might not be able to hit once, but if he hits again and again, he's got a great opportunity. And listen, the stars could be aligning for Paul Smith. I'd hope he absolutely wins it. We're training hard to win it. If we win it, fantastic. Listen, hey, who would have thought that the real gone kid? He's uh, done it and uh, getting goose pumps about it now. But I've got to switch on for Saturday night now first, so uh, let's get that one out of the way first. Of course, no, obviously that's fine. Um, I just wanted to talk to you one more about Callum Smith. Our US viewers actually saw him in America yeah. on the undercard of uh, Kelbrook. Yeah. Obviously, how, how highly do you rate him? How highly does the gym rate him? And how long do you think he'll take before he's fighting in America himself? Yeah, well, listen, Callum there, he had a good win over in the Kelbrook in the card, first round knockout. Um, I think that's seven in his career up to now. He's turned over from the Olympic Games, um, just missed out on them, turned over, and he's had a phenomenal run. Um, his rank, I think, is number nine or ten in the WBC now. He was ringside watching Beaker. Um, Durrell. I won't say Callum Smith's ready for that yet. I do feel he's like 12 months away from it, but he's going to be interested in, in some decent fights coming up now before the end of the year. He's the WBC um, international champion, and uh, we're looking at possibly fighting the likes of, like, possibly, say, George Groves in May, June next year. That's the type of fight at Anfield where we'd want for Callum Smith, but he's, a, he's got huge potential, but only time will tell whether he fulfills that potential. Perfect. And finally, I just wanted to um, get any sort of social media that you're on that we can promote to the US viewers. Um, so are you on any? Are you on Twitter? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Gallagher's Gym. Um, also Facebook at Gallagher's Gym. So uh, yeah, just tune in, keep in. I post not just about my fight, but all other links to what's happening in boxing.